O morning star, how fair and bright you shine with God's own truth and light, a glow with grace and mercy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Connections. Connections are so important, are they? Aren't they? Whether you're trying to catch a connecting flight, trying to get somewhere, or you're trying to see if one of your connections can help you land a job, or just being able to connect with family and friends over the holidays. Connections are important. And being disconnected, not so good. Cardinal Timothy Dolan, current Archbishop of New York and native St. Louisan, was on the Today Show recently reflecting on the meaning of Christmas. He said that there were two words this Christmas that came to mind. The first word he used was connection. And he talked about how in this time of hyper-individualism, God is connected to us through the baby Jesus. And in the church, we are connected to one another and nurtured in our faith by those connections. He went on to say that the itch for people this year is that they are more conscious of the darkness in the world. I've had that conversation with some of you. Where is the light? Where is the focus? Where is the meaning? In politics, in world events, in climate change, threats of war, everybody has a lot of darkness in their lives. And they know that. Epiphany is a time that clearly shows the Lord's light and glory to his people. From Isaiah 60. And through his people, Jesus is revealed to the people of the earth who dwell in darkness. It's interesting, isn't it, that during this darkest time of the year that we celebrate the light. And you know the light always triumphs over the darkness. This first Sunday after the Epiphany takes us to the Jordan River where Jesus is baptized. And today is a reminder of the importance of baptism in the life of every Christian. For it is that dying with Christ through baptism that we are born again to eternal life. And although we weren't baptized in the Jordan River, we share in the Lord's experience of being baptized. And through baptism, through our baptism, we are connected to Christ, who gives us a new way of living for this life and for the eternal life to come with him. And knowing that we live daily in our baptismal grace makes a difference in our lives. And when life situations seem overwhelming, when the days are darkest, when we feel disconnected, we can say, I am a baptized child of God, connected to Jesus in his death and in his grace, in his resurrection. Once again, from Isaiah 60, the light of the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. To say that baptism connects us to Christ is to say that prior to being baptized or prior to receiving God's word, we were disconnected from him. This is something that the scriptures confirm. And let us understand the full impact of being disconnected. When you're on the phone and the line goes dead, you know you've been disconnected. We even say the line is dead. Even if you still have a landline that gives you that flat line monotone buzzing sound, 
we say the line is dead. In Ephesians chapter 2, Paul describes our condition being prior to being connected with Jesus in baptism as being dead in our trespasses. And more than that, Paul describes us as being by nature children of wrath. In other words, we are conceived and born under the wrath of God because of our sinful nature. And yes, we were disconnected from God. But in baptism, God is at work to connect us to himself through Jesus Christ. First, in our baptism, God connects us to Christ's death. Paul writes, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. We are so closely connected with Christ's death in our baptism that it's as if we traveled back in time 2,000 years ago and are there with Jesus, dead with him on Good Friday as the sun goes down, dead with him as final preparations for his burial come to a close out that day, wrapped and placed in a burial tomb. Our sinful nature is put to death and buried. In our Bible class on Sunday morning, we've talked about this extensively. Being connected to Christ in his death, we are also connected to him in his resurrection. Every time we baptize an infant or a child or an adult, God is at work joining that person to the death of Christ. We don't know how that works, but we do know that it is the work of God to connect people with Jesus, his death and his resurrection through baptism, to connect us once again with our creator. God does not leave us dead in the tomb. Just as he buries us with Christ, he also raises us to new life through Jesus' resurrection. Paul writes, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. This newness of life is something we are walking in now, today. It is something we we have to wait for. It's not something we have to wait for until we die physically. We have it here and now by God's working in our lives through our baptism. You can see that holy baptism is no small matter. While many Christians may have difficulty explaining baptism and its benefits, St. Paul is clear that baptism takes the individual to the cross of Jesus Christ, the very foundation of which the Christian lives his life, connected to the will of God through Jesus' death and resurrection. If a person has not been baptized, we can do something about that. But if you are baptized and you have neglected it, or you have forgotten it, or not given it the priority it should be given, then you are inviting that old nature, that reign of sin, back into your life once again. And that ought not be. A funeral was arranged for this rebellious nature, that old nature, that old nature which embarrasses you and makes you feel guilt and shame and spoils your best intentions to follow the will of God. That funeral took place when you were baptized. We are not just observers of the crucifixion. Baptism personally draws each of us to the events of Calvary. The old Adam is drawn to the cross and crucified with Christ. That is the final solution to the power of a sinful nature. To avoid the wrath of God and the final solution to the finality of death itself. A solution that we could never discover or initiate or bring to conclusion on our own. In the moment of our baptism, the power of sin was broken and the old nature died. 
And we were given a new life. And in that new life, we were transformed. An action every bit as miraculous as Jesus' rising from the dead on Resurrection Day. And we believe that we now live with Him. Therefore, lines have been drawn and boundaries have been fixed the way we live. For you see, there are things that we will no longer say. There are things we will not do. There are places that we will not go. And we will be done with things for which we are ashamed. As all things which we have become, and also all things which we have become mistakenly proud. Our arrogance and our impatience have been destroyed. There will be new ways of living which we have never considered. Pathways of service to others, connecting with others and bringing happiness and joy into others' lives. With the old Adam buried, we are now free. We are now free to... I'm going to let you fill in that blank. How does that sentence end for you? In a little bit, we're going to have the installation of our officers and our board members. But there are many ways that people serve this community and the community outside of Zion Lutheran Church. Whether it's spreading salt after a snowy day or putting up and taking down Christmas decorations or folding bulletins and answering phones in the office or collecting the donations and taking them to the food pantry. The list goes on and on. We are free to serve in whatever way the Lord puts those opportunities in front of us. And I want to take this time to thank those who have served on the past boards and as officers, as we will welcome those who will continue to serve. Our thanks goes to all of you who serve in so many different ways. They are opportunities to help and to grow, to make a mistake and to be forgiven, to give and to receive help. That was Cardinal Dolan's second word, was help. To admit, to confess that we need help at times. To admit our shortcomings. To seek God's help, first of all. And to willingly receive help from one another. But that's not all. It's a new life that doesn't end with life here on this earth. Our connection with Jesus and our baptism has future blessings for us all. Paul writes, for if we have been united with him, in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. He had a physical resurrection, doesn't he? That means there's more still to come. For you see, Jesus Christ was raised from the dead physically, bodily raised from the dead, and so will we be raised from the dead, and so will we also who are connected to Christ and his resurrection through baptism. This is the sure and certain hope that we have as the baptized children of God. In baptism, we are taken from that reign of sin where death is the end, nothing more, to the reign of grace where death is not the end. And our death in baptism is the gateway to eternal life in the presence of God with all who have gone before us and all who will go come after us. We have those questions, don't we? I had the question not too long ago. Will I see my loved one in heaven? Along with those who have gone before us, we await the day when Christ, the one with whom we were buried and raised to new life in our baptism, will return. But he won't return in meekness, and humility as he did on that Christmas day. He will come in all power and in all glory and in all majesty 
And then on that day, our bodies will be raised as his body was raised. And on that day, our bodies will be changed to be like his glorious body. Our bodies will be, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, incorruptible, imperishable, and immortal. We will no longer suffer any of the effects of sin that we do now. No arthritis, no high blood pressure, no diabetes, no failing joints or organs, no heart attacks, strokes, or cancer. And our bodies will no longer be subject to death, for death itself will be no more. And on that day, all of humanity will stand before Christ, and on that day, that book will be opened. And your name will be found written in the book of life, then you will be eternally, as you are today, connected to the Father through Jesus Christ, his Son. What does a grateful heart offer to the Lord for all his gracious benefits to us, but to give him worship and praise? The righteousness of our faith is to worship Jesus and to give him thanks and praise. Amen. May the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.